I have music on my mind as I do this when I'm not podcasting. We're going to talk about Drake. As the Billboard Hot 100 top 10 at least was released. I don't know, I guess, yeah, the whole chart came out. And Drake, as I had mentioned on my Broadcasters podcast, I knew that Drake's certified lover boy was going to make a big impact. It totally did. All the tracks from the album reached the top 40. And Drake was able to lay claim to nine of the top 10 songs in the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100 chart. I don't think it's ever been done before. I mean, it's never been done before. But nothing like that. Or an album just completely just destroyed like that. So Billboard puts it out there. Way Too Sexy is the number one song in the country. The only song that survived the top 10 at all was Stay by the Kid Leroy and Justin Bieber. That's it. Everybody else just destroyed on impact. So anything that Kanye West had was just obliterated out of the sky. So nine of the top 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 and Drake doing only what the Beatles have done to monopolize the entire top five in a week. And the only other time it's actually been done was the Beatles for one week in 1964. <laughs> it's just incredible. So you got the songs that come up to the very top. You have Way Too Sexy featuring Feature and Young Thug, which had the video featured. Number one, all 21 songs on Certified Lover Boy, which was released on September 3rd, made it under the Hot 100. The album earned 613,000 album units in the U.S. The biggest weekly sum for an album in over a year. I'm guessing that's a Taylor Swift album that did that. The songs that made to the, the top nine songs that made to the top ten. Way Too Sexy was number one. Girls Want Girls number two. That featured Little Baby. His feature with Travis Scott, Fair Trade number three. Champagne Poetry. Standalone was number four. Knife Talk with 21 Savage and Project Pat, number five. In the Bible with Little Dirk and Giveon, number seven. Poppy's Home, eight. TSU, nine. Love All featuring Jay-Z, ten. And all those songs right there, the top ten, at least reached 39 million streams. Up to where Way Too Sexy Got 67 million streams, which is just a monster, and sold a lot, and did get some airplay initially off the bat. There you go. And this goes into the realm of what he did before with all the songs that he's put up that have been in the Hot 100. Just It's, it's a cavalcade of songs. What's My Name, Work, One Dance, God's Playing, Nice for What, In My Phoenix, Tootsie Slide, What's Next. Incredible. And there's just so much more you could say about what they've done, what he's done. Future also gets his uh, first number one song, the longest wait for a number one song among chart topping acts, 126 in career entries. And they did get together on Life is Good, but only got to number two. Young Thug also got his number one song first ever in this feature as well. That's crazy. So, Way Too Sexy interpolates right, said Fred's 90 smash hit, I'm Too Sexy. And remember, the level of songs that you had to do to have in order to make yourself get the top five songs on that Hot 100 chart in the history of this chart was the Beatles in 1964. April 4th, 1964. Can't Buy Me Love, Twist and Shout, She Loves You. I want to hold your hand. Please, please me. And then you have a look at what he was able to do and how it happened. For 37 years, the record was set by Michael Jackson for the most top 10 hits on the same album, which was Thriller. And nobody else had beaten that. So he beats a Michael Jackson record and a Beatles record at the same time. Ridiculous. 
And by the way, keep this in mind too, is that all these tracks that got added onto the chart, there were no singles in advance at all. And all I ever heard about, more or less, you heard people talking about, you know, streaming the songs, streaming the album, all to this point. No singles up front. Just the video for Way Too Sexy was put, initially put out. Otherwise, the album went out there on its own, and it's going up against Kanye West, who had just put out Donda the week before, literally. And look at that. And that's, like, incredible. I don't know how you kind of just justify how big of a deal and it's just where, where Drake just is such a big is so dominant I mean and he does put out quite a bit of music on a regular basis but his songs have to reach number one some way somehow and every time he gets something out there if it's something of his own whether it's an EP whether it's a single or whether it's an album if it's his and he's not he doesn't do so much when it comes to a feature because he's been on a number of features as of late to help build up other stars. But when it's his, and it's his style, forget about it. It just destroys. Now, the other thing, too, that didn't help much for, e anyway, to make it easy for what was going on was the chart as well had a big jump from the fact that there were not that many songs that were on that Hot 100 that were really strong. Like, we had a lot of songs that, you know, you had Fa Walker Hayes, Fancy Like. You had, you know, Olivia Rodrigo's Good For You that had been on the chart for a long time. And you had other songs that had just been out there and, you know, really didn't have much going. It was just kind of just there. But it's incredible about how much he did so far. I mean, last year he was putting out number one songs with the Dark Lane demo tapes, which was just a compilation which had a lot of older stuff, if I'm correct, or like previous content or previous music he ever released, things like that. The week leading up to the album, Drake sees the internet's attention with a pair of promotional gamuts, introduces social media via tweets by title, Chief Content Officer Elliot Wilson. The threat's cover art, showing emojis of a dozen women rubbing their pregnant bellies, and then real-life billboards advertising the various cities, where local guests were featured on the album. That's what they did. That's what they did to make this out. But this guy, there, all there is. Plus, the vitriol from fans that probably will like say, well, Drake and Kanye and the beef they have, that this is like a comeback to Kanye. is like, all right, we're going to destroy him. So Kanye comes out, and then all of a sudden, let's go and get this album out and leaves Kanye in the dust. So obviously fans or stands of Drake were like, we're going to make, we're going to win for our boy and put him over the top. And they did it in strides. Like this is even more, but this is different than what BTS did. It's not so much a chart manipulation. It's just, this is just true excitement over an album. Hell, I listened to it. It's pretty damn good. And he did it. That milestone, no one's going to beat. And we just have to realize that this that, that Drake is just one of the most phenomenal artists, most popular artists of our generation. This generation right now, no one else comes close. Not even close. He is the level of Michael Jackson. He is the level of Madonna. He is the level of the Beatles. All of it. And it's what it's done. I, you know, I didn't want to make too much out of this. I just thought somebody had to say something about the fact of how much this guy has done and what he's been able to accomplish. Like just the numbers, the records, the people he has, per, he's overcome to take out the entire roster of top 10 artists that were on that chart the previous week and just wiped the floor with them. Even if it is for just a week, maybe two with a couple of those songs, but it did it. And domination. So just the fact that I come and bring this on and do this tonight to go and just make the point of saying, wow, this guy is something else. There you go. All the respect to Drake. This guy is, is a monster of music. It's incredible. I'm going to leave it there and I'll talk to you next time.